Liberty City is back in business. The Colombian cartel brought down the bridge when they broke out the old Asian man from the prison transfer van all those weeks ago. Claude is grateful that they did because he is now free and on course to get the revenge he so dearly needs. To end the life that put him behind bars, that double-crossed him in front of the robbed Liberty City Bank, his former girlfriend, Catalina. Claude is still getting used to the streets of Staunton Island. He knew Portland so well, but Staunton is new to him since the bridge opened. Staunton is a far bigger pond than Portland. Huge high-rises, big business, expensive cars. Claude was a boy in a sweet shop. Claude was also getting used to the power dynamic in Staunton. Catalina runs the Colombian cartel in the north. The Yakuza owns the casinos in the south. And sandwiched between them both in Newport, a small but dangerous gang ply their trade. Led by King Courtney, the Uptown Yardies. I'm the Patient Wolf, and I'm a video game storyteller. This video is the third in the series of a collection detailing the story of some of the lesser known figures in Grand Theft Auto 3. You can watch the fourth and final instalment right now, after this, over on Patreon, if you like. Or, if viewing well after release, take a look at the playlist in the description. Subscribe, hit the bell, and if you enjoy yourself watching this, hit like before you leave. I'm the Patient Wolf, and this is the story of the turncoat. King Courtney. Claude gets a page. Word of mouth has seen his number pass like a winter cold between the crooks and delinquents of the city. He is directed to a payphone outside the Liberty City campus in Espatria. This is King Courtney. Me yardy pass, he could do with them rude boy driver and people is saying you demand. The Yardie's leader has work, but like El Burrow in Hepburn Heights, Courtney has a test for him first. A street race to gauge both his grit and his edge. The rules are explained. First driver to a checkpoint gets the bling bling. Then it's on to the next stop. If you get more checkpoints than any other driver, I can have me a little work for you. Claude is spoiled for choice with what car to use. He elects to swap his cartel cruiser with a stinger. He guessed speed and handling would win the day here. Meeting outside the stadium, this race is different to what he's used to. It's not enough to just win. Each competitor has to accumulate checkpoints. Being the first there, then onto the next. It's carnage. Not knowing where the next checkpoint will be, he doesn't know the landscape well. Competitors approach from all directions. He should have stuck with the cruiser. He could have used the increased durability. Despite a car change, Claude accrues enough markers for victory. Claude now has another employer. King Courtney. The Yardies have never been big players in Liberty City, but in Liberty, to survive as a gang, you have to have something about you. And King Courtney and his Yardies have survived by arranging races, dealing narcotics, and fluidly aligning themselves with the most powerful gangs over the years. They worked with the Leones back in 98 before turning their back on them. In 2000, they aligned with a small outfit only to double-cross them. Now there is rumour King Courtney is in talks with another prospective ally to strengthen their place in the city. The first job for the Yardies is not a matter of money or power, but a matter of honour. Two of my boys will be there any second to take you for a ride. We're going for a little ride into Epburn Heights. Kill me some filthy Diablo boo-boo's been batting up my Lady Queen Lizzie. Let's drive. Liberty City, arise! The Yardies have less decipherable street dialect than some of the gangs in Liberty, but Claude gets the gist of things. They are on their way to decimate the Diablos. You are no good. The Diablos have long been enemies of the Yardies, despite their turf existing on separate islands here in Liberty. Claude and two uptown Yardies are making the journey back to Portland because the Diablos have reportedly been saying disparaging things about the wife of King Courtney, his beloved Queen Lizzie. Honor dictates he must hit back with force. 
but Claude has not long ended an amicable business relationship with the Diablos. He helped them secure their business interests in Portland. What of his honour? But ever since Catalina's betrayal and the Leones turning on him, he sees no honour amongst thieves. Claude goes where the work is, and the work now is to take out as many Diablos as they can. Let's kill me some filthy Diablos. Before the cops can descend, they head back to safe ground in Newport. Okay, you're the kind of man we like as friend now. You iry man, real shooter. A real shooter? He had to be. To survive this city and to survive what is still to come in his dealings with the uptown yardies. Queen Lizzie's honour is restored, a woman King Courtney loves dearly nearly as much as the racing and fast cars that Yardies involve themselves with. A subject that Claude can help them with now, King Courtney with news of the job. I want you to steal me some gang car so we can do some naughty thing on our enemy turf. Drop them off at the garage in Newport and hear this, they're no use to me all broke up now. The Yardies were preparing for something big. Claude is charged with collecting tools for what looked to Claude as an all-out war. To round up gang cars so the Yardies can mount surprise attacks on each of their enemies in Liberty. A Diablo Stallion from Hepburn Heights. He would have preferred not to return here so soon. A Yakuza Stinger from South Staunton. There's always one at Asuka's condo. And back on Leone turf in Portland, a Mafia Sentinel. Under fire, he robs one outside Salvatore's Gentleman's Club. Claude returns them to Newport unscathed. Another job and more dollars for the war chest. Despite Claude's reputation for no-nonsense work, for no questions asked, Claude wondered what the Yardies were planning. This felt like a power play. Claude would soon find out. For Claude's final job, King Courtney's instructions are short. Now here it is. Get your little self over to Bedford Point. There's a stash in an old jalap. I need quick smart now. On the clock, Claude makes it to the stash hidden in the Esperanto. Inside isn't a stash, but a letter from the woman he hated most in the world, Catalina. King Courtney has aligned the Yardies to Catalina's Colombian cartel. They will provide muscle and help with spank distribution. In turn, they will receive strength, power and riches. Their future assured. That was what the gang car theft was for. Part of their plans to take ultimate control of liberty. To expand their spank empire. The Yardies and King Courtney are survivors and they are looking to stand with the victors in this war of Liberty City. As part of this alliance, Courtney has led Claude into a trap, so Catalina can finish the job she thought she had done outside Liberty City Bank. <laughs> here you go, I got a present! Tick tock, what's on my- Here you go, I got a present! Come to daddy! Come here! <laughs> Spank, the highly addictive new drug in the city, eventually drives heavy users to psychosis. Here you go, I got a present! <laughs> Catalina has rigged van loads of these users with explosives, wound them up, and now let them loose on Claude. But the Yardies and Catalina forget that Claude is a real shooter, an arm to the teeth. Claude has been double-crossed again, first by the love of his life, next by who he thought were his brothers, the Leone family, and now King Courtney. Claude would never get his chance for payback against Courtney. He disappears underground while still pulling the strings as the leader of the Uptown Yardies. King Courtney has garnered a reputation as a double-crosser, a turncoat over the years. Claude is not surprised. He moves on ever closer to his ultimate prize, revenge against Catalina. But before he gets there, there are many more jobs to do in the city for other criminals. Criminals like D-Ice, the next and final installment of this series. If it's not released yet, at the time of you watching this, you can watch it right now over on Patreon, ad-free. Link in the description. Like if you did, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you on the next one.
I'm the patient wolf, 